Uh, my name is Sharanya Makopadai Sakri. This is my husband, Raju Sakri, and we're new parents. Um, our daughter, Karisha Makopadai Sakri, was born May 25th, 2021, and uh, she has been the biggest blessing in our lives and forever will be. We started trying to extend our family, um, I wanna say in 2017. We did get pregnant um, and um, everything was going great um, until about 2018. I was 24, 25 weeks pregnant um, when things just really took a downturn. Um, and this was something that we weren't expecting at all. Um, you know, we, this was our first pregnancy. Like I said, we just, everything was going fine. I was meeting all the weekly milestones. And then all of a sudden at 24 weeks, um, they, you know, they said that um, there was like a huge hematoma in the placenta that was preventing the baby from growing. And um, there was nothing that they could do. And it was just a matter of time that um, baby wouldn't make it. I remember just thinking like why like what could we have done what 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 could we have done to prevent this did I do something you know um, you have all those feelings it's a very natural feeling and, and you know I just remember coming out of the hospital you know I was 25 weeks pregnant and then all of a sudden you're forced to deliver and then you're not pregnant anymore or you, you, you know you're you're going home so broken and lost and you know and it just doesn't make sense. I just remember having to recover as if I did have a baby which was the hardest part. Um, so yeah so I want to say after that it took like a good four or five months for me to um, be okay and, and come to terms with what had happened and um, you know we, we decided after five four or five months you know okay like this happened, we were, you know, we had to go through it, but let's try again. And maybe this time, you know, things will um, be what we were praying for. So, um, you know, we were like, okay, let's just not think about it. We'll go on with our days and days became months, months became a year. And I remember looking at him like this, it didn't take so long the first time. So what, what's happening? And so we decided to go and seek um, some, you know, a fertility specialist for some answers. And, you know, we decided um, just to, there's no harm in asking questions and finding, doing some tests and finding things out. Um, basically, after a couple of months, they told us, hey, you guys got lucky the first time when you got pregnant because there's problems on both sides. And we're looking at each other like, are you serious? You know, like... That was our one chance of getting pregnant naturally. So they they pretty much right away told us, you guys should try for IVF. You know, if, if this is what you really want, you've tried for a year, you got pregnant and things happened, you guys need to do IVF right away. We, we got started with the first round and you know, it was, as a husband, it was very difficult to watch. Um, you know, I had to give her shots, which was, which was challenging. And there were a few that were extremely painful. Uh, that once they got in there, I mean, it was it was devastating. I mean, she was writhing in pain, um, every, and it was every single day, sometimes twice a day. And we went through hundreds and hundreds of shots to get ready for it. I remember. I think we transferred. I want to say in October, October or November, November, November of 2019. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, everything was fine this time. I was like very, very cautious. I had. We had gone two rounds of IVF to get here. Transfer took, we were very, very excited. And I was about 17 weeks pregnant. And um, I remember I went in for my checkup and the doctor was like, you know, your blood pressure is looking a little high. Not, not enough to stress out about, but I would like to monitor it. So why don't you go home with this blood pressure med um, instrument, monitor, yeah. monitor and um, I want you to check it every day before bed and let me know if it gets above like a certain threshold. If it does, you call me. At 18 weeks, I remember I'm having dinner around the table and Rajiv's like, okay, let's time for our blood pressure check, let's check it. And I mean, it was just like, I wanna say it was like 140 over 100. And so I called her, she was like, that's, that's concerning, I want you to come in. So from 18 weeks, 19 weeks, 20 weeks, they basically were trying everything they could to try to keep my blood pressure from going 
down from, go from going up. They were trying to control it. And all of the doctors were like, we think it's preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is one of those conditions that happen usually later in pregnancies. It's, a, it's really crazy that it's happening so early in your pregnancy. The only cure for preeclampsia is to deliver the baby immediately. And you know, we, we just kept focusing on one hour at a time, one hour at a time, one day at a time. And we didn't want to think far ahead and just try to make her comfortable and, and see what we could do to try to prolong the pregnancy as much as we could to try to save the baby. I mean, we had gone through so much after the first one. It took us about a year just to recover emotionally and, and for her physically as well. And, and then we went through all that with the IVF and the experimental treatments to try and prevent what potentially happened the first time. And so we, we, you know, we, we did everything and she did everything she could. She, I mean, her blood pressure went through the roof. You know, it just, it got to a point where I, I started like just having, it, it, like I remember I woke up in the middle of the night and I was in so much pain. And right then Rajiv was like this, I can't, I can't see you go through this. I can't, you know, like you need to be here for baby. What, no matter how we end up being a family, you need to be here, you know, your, your health is most important. So sure, you know, we decided, okay, let's just, let's try to deliver and, 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 and try to see if, you know, I'll be okay. She delivered, she had to go through that again and deliver another child that wouldn't make it going into it. And it was very, very difficult. We expected the, um, the blood pressure and other issues to, to drop off. I mean, her, her organs were already starting to show signs of, of failing as well and we expected, the doctors all expected the preeclampsia to just stop and everything would be fine and she would, she would kind of come back up similarly to the first time. They actually concluded that the first time was actually preeclampsia in a different form and so um, that's why this one had hit as well. So we delivered, we lost that child, um, we captured her, her footprints and everything as well to remember her. and. Um, you know, I remember, you know, it was about 18 hours later, we were FaceTiming with her parents, and that's when her blood pressure started spiking tremendously. 240 over, over 136, um, 236 over 140, and it was, I'll never forget that number. And she was in so much pain from her chest, and really what was happening, and, and the doctors couldn't tell at the time, her liver was failing, it was dying, and that was, that was hurting her. There was a 24 hour stretch where they said it was dicey. And after that stretch, that would determine if she would make it or not. Um, fortunately, um, you know, that night she made it through the night. Um, they revealed in the ultrasound later on that the next day that her liver would, had failed tremendously and her kidneys were, were following suit as well. And then um, they put her back on magnesium because her, her blood pressure was so high and they needed to treat whatever they could while saving her. And so she was on there for another four days, eventually came back off. And then, you know, she started recovering. She showed signs of recovery, which was, at that point, you're just thankful that we kind of made it out. And we went home and continued monitoring. Um, and, you know, to this day, like she's still dealing with blood pressure issues. And it's, you know, that has, that second pregnancy and every, that whole experience has stayed with us. And so I remember um, them telling us like, you know, you're just gonna have to come in for blood pressure checkups every week, but um, yeah. every single one of those specialists, they, they were like, please don't do this again. You cannot carry again. You basically, you somehow made it alive. We don't know why preeclampsia turned into help syndrome after you delivered. Again, it's one of those things that rarely happens, but guess what? It happened to us. And all we wanted it's to be parents, right? Going through so much physical, mental, emotional hell, essentially, um, and and that's all we wanted. And um, and I just remember looking at Rajiv like, I'm not giving up. They told us surrogacy is an option. We already did IVF. We have those embryos. We have to try. We have to, you know, try. And that is the only thing that's going to make us heal. So either way, we decided if. Agency is an option, we'll go that route, but let's talk to our friends and family first. Let's tell them that this is our situation. Let's reach out. We never know what's gonna happen. Um, and that's what we did. You know, Sharanya wrote up an email. Um, really, it was about just trying to ask for information, 
yeah, potentially see if anyone, if, if anyone knew anyone who had done it before or would be willing to do it, just really just to get started with the process. May 24th, we sent an email out to our friends and family and um, Katie was on that email. 24, not even, not even 24 hours later, Katie sent an email back and I remember in her email she said, I would love nothing more than to carry your baby. So I never wanted to be a surrogate. It was never anything that I wanted to do because pregnancy was so tough for me. Um, with my pregnancies, I got pregnant easily, but I was sick every single day, throwing up, food aversions. But I'm a very faithful person, and I had this dream in my heart to help people. So I would pray, God, help me. Help me understand what I'm here for. Sharanya was an old coworker of mine, and I just always admired her, uh, looked up to her. I was her assistant, um, and we still kind of stayed connected through Facebook. And um, I knew she had been trying through um, IVF, and um, it was successful and we were so happy. So checking in on her, how's it going? And, um, you know, I got the message one day that things weren't going good and that she was really sick in the hospital and that she had again lost another baby. That was hard. That was really hard because I know what it is to be a parent and it's the best, the best thing. And to see someone go through it twice, someone so beautiful on the outside and the inside, it, it just, it wrecked me. So I told her, there's anything I can do, anything, you name it. And I had this feeling when I said that, what if I carry her baby? I just had this weird feeling. And I remember here today saying like, maybe we should try for her. And I was like, mm, no, like that's not something you could just go to somebody and like offer up. And a few le weeks later, I received an email from Rajiv and Sharanya um, saying, you know, this is a big ask, but we really want to have a baby. Um, and we have everything frozen and um, Sharanya can no longer, she can't carry the baby. So is anyone able to do it? And I said, yes, I want sign me up. Let me try. I just remember like rushing to Rajiv and being like, what? Like Katie wants to try. She wants to try to be our, our surrogate. She wants to try to carry our baby for us. Like. And, um, and I remember in the next couple of days, like we, we sat with them, we talked to them about like what it, what it would entail. Rajiv and I would always tell Katie, like Katie, you can, if this is too much for you and your family, or if this is by any means, like you're not sure, you tell us, you, we have an open relationship. But every time I would say that Katie and Neil, and, and you know, they, she would just would say like, this, this, is, this is what I wanna do. Happy transfer day. This is the day that you're getting into my tummy and we can hardly wait. We got a little bunny for you. So come on, baby, come on out and be healthy and we can't wait to see you. We love you so much. Um, and a couple days after the transfer, um, she was like, I'm pregnant. I know I'm pregnant. <laughs> And um, it takes two weeks, so we waited the two weeks. She got the blood test done, and our IVF clinic called, and they were like, Katie's pregnant. Just like my other pregnancies, I was sick, um, but it never bothered me because it was just so special to be carrying this child, and it wasn't just a dream of theirs. Like, they wanted a baby. Their family wanted the baby. I wanted to help change a life and um, what better way than to have their baby. Along the way, you know, I was able to teach my family, my children kindness and what it means to give, the true meaning of giving. I had to give myself shots in the stomach um, a few months before leading up and um, my son learned how to do it and he was a part of the process. He thought it was really cool. One time he came up and he said like, Mommy, why would, why would you do this? Why would you make yourself sick? You know, and I said, because it's gonna be worth it. Like, we're helping people. And it was really cool that he saw that. 
he saw that, you know, sometimes you have to get out of your comfort zone to help others. Week by week, we would just check in with her and, and, and you know, like the first, I want to say 12 weeks, 13 weeks, we took her to the, all the IVF appointments. And, and um, you know, 13 weeks, we celebrated, we told everybody. Um, it was so funny, we had matching sweatshirts and we had like the picture of the um, ultrasound. And um, <laughs> we put the ultrasound in my sleeve and then we pulled it out and we put it into Katie's sleeve. And we were like, Katie's providing womb service. May 23rd, 2021, we met for lunch. We were all hanging out at the swings at the park and Katie's, you know, this big. She's like, I'm 38 weeks now. Let's see, let's see how it goes. She had Evan and Macy not at 40 weeks, a couple weeks earlier. So we felt like it was going to be a good week. And then um, I want to say 48 hours later, where I text Sharanya and Rajiv and I said, okay, my water broke, come pick me up. They were so excited. <laughs> they were so excited and um, they came and got me and the whole way there, we were just so excited. We went to the hospital and um, I just, I mean, it was just like surreal. It was surreal like being in that moment with Katie and us and it was just incredible. The fact that she wanted both of us to be there and we will never forget that moment. So we got an epidural and then all of a sudden I was like, okay, I, uh, you know, they, they, they increased the Pitocin and I'm like, nope, she's coming. They're like, no, no, no. I said, no, she is. Trust me. I, I can feel it. And so she came so fast after that epidural and um, they placed her on me just to kind of clean her off. And the moment I saw Sharanya hold her baby, oh, it was just the best moment to see someone become a parent and help because to be a mom is just the greatest joy and the greatest blessing. And to be able to give that as a gift, there's no greater gift. Well, she was born 11.24 a.m. on May 25th, but that's a very special date because May 25th, 2020 is when Katie said yes to being our surrogate. So it's it was just magic, pure magic that our daughter, Carisha, um, you know, was born on May 25th, 2021, um, and by the help of her fairy godmother. So it took, you know, a year. It took a year to go from a complete nightmare to a complete dream, you know, to have. And that was cool because, like I said, so many people, not just their family, wanted this baby. Sharanya and Rajiv are so loved. And when this happened a second time, so many coworkers and friends were just hurting and just wanting to fix it for them and not knowing how, not knowing how. And um, I got the honor to do it. And I, I just, I do, I feel so honored. She keeps saying how grateful she is. I'm so grateful. The fact that Katie and Neil and Evan and Macy that day, you know, we, we were just two families became one, you know, and, um, and that's because of their kindness and generosity and the fact that they believed in us that we would be good parents. And how lucky is this little girl to be loved by so many? This is Karisha, Karisha Makopadai Sekri. And we actually decided to give her a K name after her Auntie Katie, her fairy godmother. We knew that from day one, we'd always call her Baby K. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, so my husband and I, Rajiv, we were kind of contemplating like, what K name, what K name, it has to be perfect. And then when we came across Karisha, Karisha actually means miracle in Sanskrit. So it's the perfect name for her because she is our miracle. That's right. Our perfect miracle. <laughs> yes. That's right. That's right. <laughs>